It says, and God designated, this is Hebrews chapter 5, verses 10, and God designated or positioned him to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. It says, there is much more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially because you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. Whoa, that's some context right now for what he's talking. He says, you have been believers for so long that you ought to be teaching others. All right, this sounds like those believers that are just stubborn. They want to stay at one level and they don't ever want to grow. All right. It says you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. Okay, so there are some basic fundamental things about God's word. Now, let's keep reading. It says you are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. This sounds very familiar. Sounds like uh, 1 Corinthians when Paul was speaking into speaking to them. He says, I wish to give you milk or excuse me. I wish to give you meat. He said, but you guys are carnal. He said, you guys are following the things of men, but not the things of God. I see that's the dividing line right there. When you start to follow the things of men, you it shows that you are not a spiritually mature Christian or you're not on the trajectory or pathway of maturity, right? Like you and I both know that, you know, I'm going to think about when the kids were little babies and how when they I always think about teeth whenever I see this. Because I remember the day they started getting teeth, you can give them just the littlest piece of food and they don't want to go back to that bottle. It was very, very seldom. But I mean, they like it. But once they get that food, it's like you can't undo that. But the thing about it is that you got to grow some teeth. Amen. And some people want to stay at that baby level, that baby level where they keep being unstable. They have all this time to learn all this word but they keep on staying in an unstable situation. Like the Bible says a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all that he does. So everything that we do, we should be looking to grow, amen? It shouldn't be a, okay, we should be about milk first, solid food later. Just like in life, God is, he wants people to be born again, amen? He wants a harvest to be pulled out, right? But here's the thing. Everything that grows, everything that, that, that God wants, he always wants growth. Even when he talks about staying in the true vine, he says what? He says, some grew this, some grew that. He said, but you stay connected in true vine. He says he reaps fruit, but he also does what? Pruning. And so that pruning process is also a part of us getting more mature, cutting things, dead things out of our lives, cutting things that, you know, not necessary. So he says, 14 or excuse me, 13, he says, for someone who lives on milk, you see that, lives on milk, is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Okay, see, many, I would say professing Christians, I'm not even sure if they're truly born again, but let's say they're born again. There's people that are out there that they don't want to, they don't know what to do is right, honestly. They keep running into the same old cycle of things and primarily it's because they're not getting the food that they really need. They want to stay on milk. It's something has entered their mind, a stronghold and imagination that says you'll only be at this level and you're not going to grow anymore. As if like God wants you to stay there. God wants every single person. I don't care. Hear me on the spirit. Holy Ghost told me this right now. He says no junior Holy Ghost. Just because you're a child or just because you're a grown up or you haven't been 80 something years in the faith. And you haven't seen, you know, five different uh, decades of information. That doesn't matter. If you have the Holy Spirit, God is calling you for growth. Amen. All right. So why does that matter? It says solid food is those who, it says solid food is for those who are mature. Who through training, someone say training. Through training, I will call training, teaching, have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Okay, so for all of those people out there that say, I don't need nobody to teach me. I'm only with God. I'm by myself. I got my own relationship with God. You know, there's a lot of people out there and they only listen to people that I'm gonna keep a buck. They don't challenge them. If a man of God is not challenging you to live right, to live according to this word, if a man of God or woman of God is not teaching in such a way 
where they believe that this word is 100%, that it's actually there for your building up, for your edification, for your growth, then I will tell you this, stay away from them. They're not here for your growth. If people want you to stay at that level, I remember back in the day, uh, I can't remember it was uh, management or something like that. And I was first getting hired in an old, old retail store. And I remember the area manager when I was just entering in the first week and I met up with them and they gave me like a, a, a handbook that wasn't my position, but it was the position above my position. And they said, and when you get to this position, we're going to give you another handbook after that. And I said, well, why are you doing that? And he said, because our goal is to help you grow. See, when someone in the world already knows out the gate, I don't want to keep this person here. I want to invest in them. And I want to invest in them to the point where even the world knows about that. So now in the gospel, why is it different? Why is it when people come to Christ, it's like, you can't tell me anything. Don't offend me. Don't judge me. We hear that a lot. You know, the Bible says you can't actually judge. If you look at the context, when Jesus was saying that, look at the speck in their eye. He was basically saying, you can judge, but judge in righteousness. He never said that we couldn't judge. He just said that the measure that you judge, you're going to be judged according to that. So when you judge, be careful how you judge. But Paul was saying, when we judge, he says that we can judge those who have the spirit of God. He said, but those that don't have the spirit of God, you know what is that? They can't judge you. And I know I'll bring it up later because a lot of people say, ah, that don't sound right. I'm telling you in the spirit. There are some things that if you're not spirit filled and you don't know and discern things properly, guess what? You can't judge the person. In fact, in the Bible says that you can't even make an accusation against a leader in the church or an elder in the church without two or three without witnesses. You can't just make an accusation because God wants is I'm telling you right now, God is protecting his called people. God is not the author of confusion. Amen. God does not want us to be as like Ephesians 4 says, babes tossed to and fro. And we're going to see what that looks like. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right or wrong. Ask yourself this question. Do you have the skill right now to recognize right and wrong in a matter? Isaiah 520 says what? We were just reading it not too long. It says that woe to those that call what? Evil good or right wrong and wrong right. As in Romans, Romans 1 says that they exchange the truth of God for what? A lie. He said because, he said they worship the creation rather than the creator. I guarantee you most people that have issues and they're babes and they can't accept the solid word of God that tells them how to live righteously. Those people that are tossed to and fro, right? that are double-minded, most likely they're double-minded because the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in some of his ways, no, all of his ways. And they continue to live in this dibble-dabble sin life. Uh, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is wrong. And they don't even want to put in the effort to actually live godly. Why? Because they don't accept teaching. They don't accept training. It says who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. All right, next chapter. Hebrews 6 says this. So let us, this is continuing from the, from the previous conversation. So let us stop going over the basic teachings Christ about Christ again and again. Hear me in the Holy Spirit. How many times do you see on these social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, blah, 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 about believers or Christian quote-unquote denominations or organizations saying the same thing over and over and over again and never ever getting to the place of what we would call maturity, maturity in the faith. They're going over the same basic teachings. And I'm going to be honest with you, still till this day, you got people saying, you don't have to repent. You don't have to live like this. I don't serve God out of fear because if my God He's not a fearful. I'm not afraid of him. 
I just have reverence. I just have an, a, a deep understanding. No, you need to fear God. He's the one throwing people. Satan is not throwing nobody in the lake of fire. Hear me out. God makes the command. The angels reap and they toss them in the lake of fire. There needs to be an understanding, a deep, not just reverence, a fear. The Bible says the fear of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. So if you're on a journey to find out wisdom, to find out truth for your life, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of that. So what is wisdom, guys? The Bible clearly says, look, wisdom is not just having a bunch of knowledge. Wisdom is the application of that knowledge. So that you're getting trained to say, okay, I know what's right and wrong. But the world that we're living in, guess what? It's not like that. Everything's relative. They don't even understand what something is absolute. And the, the terrible part about it is that they're just spinning in a state of confusion. Because the Bible says that there's always truth. Amen? He says that you can either be for the truth or you can be against the truth. And Jesus is showing us and trying to tell us, now, go on to perfection. He said, don't, he says, let us go on instead and become mature in our what? Understanding. Hebrews 6 says, stop going over the basic stuff. And what's the basic stuff? This is what the uh, Hebrew uh, author says. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from what? Evil deeds. Evil actions, sin. That's why in Acts 2.37, Acts 2.38, when they said, what shall we do? He asked Peter, what should we do? They basically said, what should we do to be saved? Like, what should we do? Not what should we believe? They already have the belief. They already realized in that moment, wait a second, Jesus is the Messiah, the same one that we were, we were rejecting, the same one that we were, you know, we didn't accept. He said, okay, what do we need to do? He said, repent, turn away from your sins. That's not a one time. This is consistently, continually, you should be rejecting sin in your life. You should know and have the knowledge that repenting from evil deeds is not saying, Lord Jesus, I messed up. I ask for forgiveness. You have the, look, you, we have the grace to do that. But God doesn't want us feeling like we are a slave to sin. That's the lie of the enemy. If you're born again, you're not a slave to sin. I used to believe in that lie. Trust me. I, I know. How Satan, how the devil put a lie in my mind and said that you cannot really live holy. That is not realistic. And you know what? You don't want to know why? Because I was acting like a babe. I kept thinking, you know what? I'm just going to believe what that other preacher said. And I'm just going to be a sinner saved by grace. There's nothing biblical about that statement. And I know I offended people and I don't really care. Because the word of God offends, you'll get over it. Get into the word of God. Stop making stuff up. Stop cherry picking the scriptures. And please, please stop adopting non-biblical doctrines that are coming from these communities. Specifically, not calling nobody out, but a lot of non-denominational, evangelical type of communities will say this stuff. Jesus is love. Fill the void in your heart. It's okay, come as you are. You know what you're saying? Yes, come as you are, because they don't want people saying, oh, I gotta clean myself up. No, Jesus cleans you up, but it's through a relationship and you realizing what his power was when you go in that water, when you get when you actually have a change in state of mind. Repentance means what? Metanoia means a change of state of mind, meaning and now you're saying, I'm not living and repenting of evil things. But here's the thing. Why is, every, why is everybody stuck on the bottom level? Why are people still struggling with the same things? Why are people still entertaining a worldly influence? For example, listen to worldly music. Is that something that a real born or being believer should be doing? No. I had a struggle with that at one point myself until the Holy Spirit says, stop listening to that crap. Well, I, I think it's okay because I'll, I'll get the, uh, what's the term? uncensored what do you call the the censored version excuse me i'll get the clean version and i'll be good yeah god look at me i'm 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 working for the kingdom no you're listening to still demonically influenced music what do you think because they just leap out the curse words here and there 
that you don't, that your mind don't know how to fill in the blanks? Come on. And you don't even know the spirit that is projecting. What is the content of their information? We think we can just hang with whoever we hang with. Do y'all understand the Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals? Do you think I would just hang out with people? The Bible says that light has no fellowship with darkness. Amen. But we're supposed to expose the works of darkness. Meaning in, if I'm hanging out with people that rob and steal and kill, and I'm just like, oh, I'm a sinner saved by grace. That's why I hang out with them. Because, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, Jesus hang out with sinners. Listen, if you're not really there and you're not and you're not strong enough to actually be a witness to these people. Guess what? You can get captivated. You can get influenced. It's very easy for a Christian to be deceived. That's why he how many times does even Jesus speak about deception? He speaks about the many the, the Pharisee. He speaks about all that stuff. See, we think. Someone like me, who's giving the word of God and showing in love, but also showing in, look, love concealed. <laughs> I don't know, if, like, I don't know if that's really love. You should be able to speak people in love. Like the Bible says, perfect love cast out fear. This should be something where if you know burning building is, is gone down and hear people screaming, you ain't going to wave at them and say, I love you. Like, no, you're not even going to wave at them. You're going to run in there and try to get some help to take them out. But the problem is that many people are in a burning building right now thinking that everything's all good. They can keep listening to worldly music. They can keep being however they want. They can try to, quote, unquote, fit in into the world when the Bible clearly states that if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. If you're not trying to get growth in Christ, then and you're still repenting Listen, repenting is not forgiveness. Repenting is turning away from evil deeds. I don't want that anymore. I believe it says 2 Peter or Peter. It says, be holy for I am holy. Y'all Bereans out there, y'all can check the scriptures. You can just Google it. I don't have time to go to it. But here's what it says. And placing our faith in God. It says, we do not have to start again with the fundamental importance of what? Here's the first part. Repenting from evil deeds and placing our what? Faith in God. The Bible says that. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. How do you get that? You get a preacher, a man of God or woman of God. Someone's going to speak out and be and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. It says you don't need further instruction about what? Baptism. Okay, now here's the thing. Baptisms. You look at the Greek in that. I'm telling you right now, that means full immersion. See, the problem is if it's the basic teachings, if this is the fundamentals, why are we crossing things out? Why are some people saying, just believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and, 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 and believe in your mind? It said, confess with your mouth, believe it in your mind that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. That's it. Abracadabra, done. Romans 10, 9. Wait a second. You don't read the context. You don't understand the sovereignty of God. You don't even understand who Paul was speaking to, but you use these piece by piece, cherry pick things and don't see that this is the beginning. Like, this is a process. Shall be saved. It's not immediate. Shall be is future tense. And it's making it pretty clear here that there is a trust, an obedience, and a commitment to Christ. That, And I'm going to prove it to all those people that go that once saved, always saved hype here. If y'all them once saved, how, once saved, always saved type of people, and y'all think, I'm just grace. I don't have no option. I could just keep sinning and I'm just going to live how I want to live. And that's just the condition of my heart. And that's just the fallen state of man. Guys, get in your Bible. Stop being deceived. Stop listening to the cliches. Get in your word. Study to show thyself approved unto who, man? Unto God. Rightly divide this word of scripture so that you won't be what? You won't be ashamed. You won't like, here's what God is trying to say tonight. Let us go on to perfection. Let us get more mature. Yes, you got the Holy Ghost. Check. Okay. Yes, you got baptized. But here's the thing. If you're running into other born again believers that say, yeah, and then I ask them, you believe in God. Amen. You have a relationship with God? What does that really look like? Okay. Let's go over baptisms. Is it necessary for baptism? If it's not necessary, why in every single book there's more scriptures about people getting baptized in Jesus' name? From all throughout the book of Acts, Romans 6 says that it's actually putting you in Christ. Amen? 
Y'all understand that if he's not bringing this up, why even bring it up? It's just a teaching. No, no, no. It's saying these are the basic teachings about what? Christ. You connect your life to Christ when you operate in these things, not just an idea in your head. Like I said, if it was just an idea in your head, we can get a lot of people saved that way. And according to God's word, that ain't going to happen. According to Jesus, he said, broad is the way. Broad is the way to destruction. Many will find it. He said, but what? The narrow, difficult path leads to life. He says, narrow is the gate. Difficult is the path that leads to life. Life everlasting. So many people are arguing about this stuff. I've heard people, literally people saying, don't, I don't need to get baptized. And they keep jumping up and saying, well, what if somebody, you know, they had the opportunity, but they, you know, they get in the car, but they believe in Jesus. They just left church and they got hit by a car. And so what are you telling me? They're not saved. Look, I'm not saying their internal destiny because I'm not God. But what I'm saying is that we need to be real about these scriptures and stop trying to create a narrative or an idea of something that really is not, it's, it's not saying it. The house of, the house of uh, Lydia, the book of Acts. How many people, they say, oh, Paul didn't come to baptize. Listen, Paul baptized men on the side of the road. It said, I think it was 12 in all. They were disciples. They were actually believers. He said, what type of baptism did you receive when you believed? He said, did you see the Holy Spirit? They were like, no, we never even heard of the Holy Spirit. He had to give them an upload and say, here's the upgrade. Here's what's happening. Like, you guys are on John stuff. He was spe speaking about the man that we're about to get baptized to. That is Christ. Because when you're baptized into Christ in Jesus' name, the name that's above every name, the name that we can get remission of sins, that's how we become in Christ. That's why it says there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ that do what? That do not follow the what? They do not follow the, the, the sinful nature of the flesh, but they what? Are led by the spirit. Some people say there's no condemnation in Christ. But continue with the whole paragraph. Continue with the whole sentence. It says you cannot follow the carnal mind. It says God will not be mocked. If you sow into the what? Flesh, you will reap death and decay. But if you sow into the spirit, if you live the life in the spirit, you will reap life and peace. But we're trying to apply the scriptures and say that it's something else. All right. So what's the basics? Everybody understanding this? Hebrews 6 is basically saying you don't stay at one level. You got to you, you gotta grow. Everyone is meant to grow. Everyone is meant to grow in God, amen? There's no like, oh, I'm a baby for 18 years, right? Like, you don't want no baby Hueys and, you know, you know, remember that cartoon, that, that big baby duck? And he was like a grown up. He was a grown man or grown, like, he was grown and he had just like a big diaper on. He's a big, huge person with a diaper on. This is weird, right? Like, God don't want that, all right? God is, like, really looking for us. But he's saying, he's telling and letting me know many people of the faith are struggling with this. They're picking and choosing, right? You got the people that are charismatic. They're all about casting out demons. They're all about uh, uh, fill, uh, uh, miracles, signs, and wonders. And remember, the Bible says that these are the signs. Hear me out on the Holy Ghost, because I know where God is going with this. He's saying these are the signs of those that believe. These are the signs that follow. They shall what? Cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick. It says speak in diverse tongues or speak in new tongues. Amen. That's the same Greek word for Acts 2. When the, when the, fire, when the Holy Spirit fell on them and they spoke in tongues of fire. And it also speaks of these other items as signs and wonders and being able to raise sick and all that stuff. But here's the thing. Is it a condition of your salvation? It says these are the signs, but it says that those that are believed and what are baptized will be saved. Eventually will be saved. This is what Jesus said out of his mouth. Mark 16, 16. Jesus also said that Jesus also said that we should go out and preach what unto all the nations or to be exact. To make disciples to all the nations. There should be a process of growth. There should be a process of training. 
Why is this all important here? Maybe we're not struggling with this. Maybe we're not. But God knows that there are people that are. And there are people that will jump to the high heavens and say, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. And don't even understand what that word is. What are you saved from? What are you saved from? Did Christ return yet? Was there, was there, a, uh, was there a judgment already? Did you get judged by Christ yet? What are you supposed to be doing in the body that you're, you're living? Did you get your new body already? I know a lot of people, the kingdom now, I get that stuff. We are living in the kingdom now. And God is doing this thing from the inside out. Amen. That's why he says the outward man is what? Perishing. Your, out, your outer man, this body should be perishing. But your inner man is being renewed. What? Daily. Renewed. 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 How does that happen? Get off milk. <laughs> Start doing what's right. Start growing in your relationship with God. Start learning how to trust and depend on him regardless of the storm. Amen. Start obeying his commandments. Turn completely away from your evil deeds. Meaning in the actions that are evil. Stop making it. Devil made me do it. No, you made yourself do it. You just opened up more demons into your mind. And so now we got triple things going on. You lust after the world, you love your sin, and you got demons that you need to be delivered from. And a lot of people are, are like that. Christian people, by the way. And, or, yeah, I mean, that's basically what's happening.